Welcome back to the Shifting Schools podcast. Trisha, so nice to see you today. How are you doing, Trisha? I'm doing well, Jeff. I'm really excited to be chatting with you because we're talking about our um, our favorite topic. We're talking about AI today. And we're also going to be talking about our podcast audience, which is like, you know, I think a close second or maybe tied for first of things that we love talking about. Yeah, that's true. So here's what our thought was. Our thought was, you know, this time of year, uh, November, December, the holiday season, the season of giving. A lot of times we have, uh, you know, podcast listeners reach out to us and say, what is something that we can do to give back to you? And so we thought that this year for the months of November and December, so for the next two months, we are going to have a little challenge. And the challenge is if you are the first person from your state or country to leave us a review over on Apple I, Apple Podcast or on Spotify, there's a Q&A section if you're on the Spotify app, or if you just email us and something that we can put on the website, uh, giving us kind of like a review of an episode, a review of the podcast. In your review, if you tell us what state you are from or what country you are from, and you are the first person from that state or that country to leave a review, we are going to give you free access to our all-inclusive AI bundle over in camp. And Trisha, I don't even know, what did we set the price for that? Isn't it like $300 I or something? I think it is, but it's definitely more valuable mm-hmm. than that. Um, we've been trying to keep our prices really yeah. accessible. We know that teachers, school leaders are are struggling right now to keep pace with all the changes with AI. Um, and we also know, you know, there's like so much information out there. So we're doing our, be- our best to keep that price point reasonable. Um, and considering everything that's inside that all inclusive guide, I think that's a pretty good price point. Um, and I'll yeah. also say, you know, people who purchase our courses, often they'll email us and, you know, they might have a follow up question and we're responsive. So it's not like you purchase something from shifting schools and there's not a human on the other side. Um, there, there's very much a human element. And uh, we, we love that. That conversation piece is really important to us. We do not have AI answering our emails at this time. That's basically what Trisha is saying. Not yet anyway. Someday we'll be big enough that an AI will do our emails for us. But right now it's uh, Trisha and I on the other end of the email. So if you would like it, I just looked it up. It's $275 value. Uh, but we would love to give that to you. And all that we ask for in return is leave, be the first person from your state or your country to leave us a review on Spotify, on Apple podcast, or if you'd like to, you can just email us uh, and make sure you include in there the state or country that you are leaving the review from. So we can check off that you were number one and we will uh, give you that $275 value of our all inclusive AI bundle It has our five day challenge equity with AI um, assessment with AI. And I forget what the fourth one is, but there's like four different uh, courses over there. All The together, fourth so. one is our guide. We we're really happy actually to hear that a lot of PLCs are saying and are recognizing that this is a conversation. This is an exploration that is going to go beyond, you know, like the two day workshop that you're going to really want to be extending those conversations. So we also have a tool there for folks who have a PLC or you've got a grade level team and um, looking at AI and education is one of your focus points and you don't want to start from nothing. You don't want to have to reinvent the wheel. That guide gets your group started with your exploration. So there you go. Head over, leave us a review, add your country or state, and we will uh, get that rolling for you. Uh, but really appreciate it. Of course, uh, reviews are always a way that podcasts get to be recognized. Uh, we just thought this time of year makes makes good sense 
to kind of run a little challenge to see just how many we can we can gather in a couple months. So, all right, well, Trisha, let's let's talk about today. We're we're covering one of our free guides, and I know that uh, a couple months ago you were all in. You were you wanted a Mid Journey account, and then you were over finding, and then Dolly three came out inside of ChatGPT, which we both have. Uh, we both have the plus edition to play with some of the new features coming out there. And so you created this guide, text to image AI for creative writing. Talk a little bit about this guide. This yeah, week. I mean, it's interesting, Jeff, you bring up when I wanted to get started with Mid Journey, um, which is a really great text to image generator. Um, but it's also a gigantic community. When I first got started with that, in order to use Mid Journey, uh, you have to be inside their Discord. And you open that up and it's hundreds, maybe thousands of people at any given moment, yeah. any day of the week, um, sharing their prompts, getting their images generated. And you can actually just kind of sit there and lurk and watch. And it dawned on me that what that Discord group was like was sort of like a real time creative writing group. Because when we're talking about mm -hmm. generating, um, you know, really in detail images, you do have to work on that prompt craft. Um, just like with chat GPT or perplexity, the more context, the more detail oriented, the better your uh, output becomes. And so I kind of was thinking, this is a tool not just to generate art, but this is also, I think, a tool to reinvigorate the creative writing classroom. So our free guide looks at uh, looks at doing that. You've got links to three different free tools. So if you're saying, well, Trisha, you know, Mid Journey is paid, you don't have to be using Mid Journey. So you've got a link to Adobe Firefly, Crayon, or Canva now also has an art generator. Uh, inside that guide, you also have um, a, a little bit of a key guide for some tone words. Um, you know, everything from melancholic to foreboding to nostalgic. I think of this as also a great way to be doing vocabulary lessons because uh, for any language teacher that teaches tone, it is so interesting to play around with these text to image generators and, you know, pick whatever it is that you're trying to portray and swap out that tone and see how the generative AI tool is mm. interpreting that tone. Um, I think there's a lot of great conversation to have around that. Um, and then also perspective, uh, you know, friends of mine who have taught photography, if you've got that knowledge bank of um, all of the different angles and perspectives in your photographer vocabulary toolkit, you're going to take very naturally to, the, to this. Um, I, I don't know that most people do have that. So I also think this is a great way um, to build up that lexicon around like what is a bird's eye view and also think about what that means from the creative writing standpoint. What does it mean for us to put a character in that perspective as opposed to a close-up or a worm's eye view? So um, again, there's just so much playfulness to be doing with language. Uh, it's not just about the visual arts, I think. There, there's more in the free guide, but I'm going to just pause myself for a moment because um, you know, I, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm just rambling. You can tell how much I love using these tools and the link that I think, like the promise that is there for creative writing work. Well, and I think there's just so much you could do in this with even just to your point of vocab. You know, if you are an art teacher, how do you use the vocab of art to support in creating these images and play with those different vocab? You know, I, I think that's so huge. Or when we're talking about creative writing, coming up with different words, more creative words, getting out your thesaurus uh, and playing with different words and seeing what happens. And I think the the big takeaway that I'm seeing already, and I'm it's very interesting, I'm seeing this pop up more and more in my newsfeed, is what we're doing is we're finally figuring out a way to get around copyright issues. I am seeing more and more images. There was one the other day I was showing my wife that it was a, an image of two people shaking hands, but the hand had five fingers and a thumb. So six total shaking the other one. Hand. I was like, that's an AI image. And how much do we not care? Like most people I'm going to guess don't, didn't even see it, right? Unless you're critically looking at this image. Um, but I think it's, it's going to be huge for kids. Also know that if you are a Google app school, Google is pushing this out 
uh, very soon into Google Slides. Uh, if you have a Gmail account and you sign up over at labs.google and you have just a regular gmail.com account, uh, you can already get in and play with it. Uh, when you go to insert image, there's one that says create an image for me. The same thing happens if you're a Microsoft person. If your school uses Microsoft and they have Microsoft Enterprise, uh, they have now got Dolly 3. Uh, you go to bing.com image cre- images, I believe is the URL, and you can create images right inside of uh, your own system. And so these systems are coming. And so just getting kids to play with them. And again, it gets us around that copyright issue. That copyright issue to me is the is the thing to be thinking about of you have students and you want students to be creating uh, images for their work. You want them creating images for their writing and what a great way or for their presentations. And we, we can talk about, uh, we can talk about copyright in a different way and how you can't copyright IA images the way copyright is written right now. You cannot copyright AI images, uh, but you can use them and you can create them and you can make them exactly the way you want them to be. Uh, so that's great. I just love the, the, the parts of this guide that Trisha's put together, the getting started, considering the ketone words. She's got all this for you in the guide, perspective, giving and taking, whether it's a bird's eye view, be thinking about that. Uh, the last couple of sections of this guide are might learners pair the style of their writing with the style of the image. So we're, now we're talking about style words and leveraging collaborative prompt authoring. Trisha, do you want to talk about maybe those last two? Yeah, before I do, I want to just circle back to what you were saying about copyright, because I think also if you're a business teacher um, and you know, you've got to learn a little bit about copyright yeah. or you're an entrepreneurship teacher, uh, Adobe Firefly, or, uh, Adobe Firefly rather, has come out and said none of the data that's fed their model um, is from images that are under copyright. So you can read a little bit more about how they built that and why. Mm. And then Dolly 3 actually has had an update where if you are prompting it and you ask it to generate something in the style of a living artist, it'll often tell you like, no, I can't do that. And sometimes even I was playing around with it to see like how far this copyright you know, issue plays for them. And I asked it to generate an image in the style that an iPhone three would take. I was curious to see like what mm. it would do. And it said, no, you know, how pixelated uh, yeah, that is. <laughs> but it, it, it kind of turned that around and said, no, like I'm unable to do that. So living artists actually are able to connect with Dolly and let them know if like, I don't want you to use my work. They also have the option to allow their style to be used, but um, that's an interesting conversation. And, and Dolly, their model also has a blog. Uh, maybe it, we'll leave the link to that in the show notes. So business teachers, you can go and take a look at that. And then on that business end, again, Amazon has just recently um, announced that what they will be doing for small business owners is they're going to have a generative AI tool built in. So let's say uh, I create uh, plateware. And, you know, I'm a small business. I don't have the funds for a photographer and to do all this fancy staging, but I still want to sell my plates and bowls. What I'm going to be able to do now inside mm. inside of Amazon is they have a generative AI background creator where you can place your product and use generative AI. So again, I'm thinking if I teach business, if I teach entrepreneurship, these are going to be very much the tools, not of tomorrow's business person, yeah. but of today's. Um, so today's, I, I think that's a great yeah, conversation agreed. to have. Now, the the last part of the free guide kind of takes what we're talking about and turns it on, turns it on its head. Um, so essentially, you've got a slide deck. You have a few uh, images that have already been generated. You've got a timer, and you're going to invite teams of students to try and figure out what's the prompt that's going to get us closest to that image. So that's where you could go back to your style words, your tone words. Uh, you know, students are going to be looking very closely at that image and thinking like, what is that style? So Jeff, you know, to your point, art teachers, you want students to know like, what is vintage? What is Baroque? What is surreal? Um, mm. You know, I could see yeah. doing that. And and also it, it's just about having fun, right? So students trying to work out, uh, you'll, you'll have on each slide, both the Dolly 3 version versus the Canva version. And have your students, again, be working creatively, collaboratively to try and figure out what's the prompt that's going to get us the closest to that. 
Um, uh, because again, I, I, I just sort of think some folks might really, if you've not played with these tools, you might really underestimate how much writing is involved in really getting to that final yeah. out pro, uh, output that you want. Um, and this is where you and I have repeated mm -hmm. ourselves a lot that if you want the AI literacy, you're only going to be able to get it if you're experimenting with the tools. You've got to be getting That's in right. there, getting playful, figuring this stuff out. Um, you know, this, this prompt craft, prompt engineering, it takes a lot of creativity. So if you're hearing folks say something like, these tools are killing writing, they're killing critical thinking, creativity, I really think it's the opposite. But I think you'll be skeptical of that until you start playing around with the tools. And I love that the three tools that, that we highlight here are mm -hmm. all free. Um, if you have a Canva account, there are a lot of schools that have Canva accounts either for teachers uh, or I know some schools that even have it for all their students. Uh, that That is automatically built in. You already have parent permission around that. The Crane one that we have, C-R-A-I-Y-O-N, you don't even need a login for. So you can use that with students. Uh, you don't even need a login. So you're not giving up any personal information. Kids don't have to put an email address. It's just literally a free one. Uh, and then, of course, Adobe Firefly, if you have Adobe products, which most schools do, uh, that then you've already been you've already given up or kids already have an account at Adobe that makes those things just a little bit easier as well. So um, that's the other thing is people are, are constantly coming out and saying, yeah, but, you know, we can't have kids sign up for this. More and more of these things are just becoming open facing and that. As we've heard, you know, even we're not going to get into this episode, but some of the things that ChatGPT is coming out with where people are creating these bots and can just turn them public if they want to, um, we're going to see more and more just public facing, I think, chat, G chat bots uh, on the internet that are going to be specifically trained for specific things. So I think we're going to see this thing get a lot more free and open before it probably goes the opposite direction in a couple of years from now. But uh, right now it's pretty incredible. Just this innovation stage that we're in is pretty awesome. So yeah, and um, it's time, time for us know, to take intentionally it. inside the guide, the images that are there are generated with canvas tool, because I've heard some folks say like, Oh, well, that's not going to be anywhere near as powerful as, you know, this tool or that tool. And it's sort of like, Mm, have you played around yeah. with it? Because actually, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. <laughs> so um, we made a point of using Canva to generate yeah. those images. If you try out anything from the guide, um, or again, this gets you personally interested in experimenting with these tools, we'd love to hear back from you. Our email address, info at Shifting Schools, is also inside that free guide. You'll find the link to it over there in the show notes. Um, I want to wish you happy experimenting and, and generating. We hope to see some of your, your artwork. If you create something for the first time, email it our way. We'd love to see what you come up with. Awesome, Trisha. Thanks again, Trisha, for making the free guide available to everyone. Again, you can find that link in the show notes. And uh, there's more free guides for you over at shiftingschool.com. Thank you, Trisha. It's always great. And remember, go leave that review and uh, get a free access to our all-inclusive AI guide. Until next time, we'll see you on the network.